Welcome to lecture 8.4. Alright, so now we're looking at, in the xy plane, plane curves and parametric equations. Okay, so a common way to describe a curve is with a parameter we would call t. This is useful when describing the path of an object with respect to time, hence why we would call something t, t for time. For example, if we wanted to figure out where, let's say, a rocket ship when we blast it off into the sky or something, where that rocket ship is going to be at certain time t. Let's say, where would it be in an hour from now? So we might have an equation that describes the path of the rocket, for example, if it's a parabolic equation. And then we would add on a new parameter instead of just x and y to discover exactly what time that rocket will be at a certain position in the sky, maybe. Just for example, that might be a way of thinking about it. So let's take a look at example one. Sketch the curve. First, use a table of values and then write without the parameter t. Check with the graphing calculator. Okay, so uh, one thing to note for lecture 8.4, for any of the problems that require calculator work, I will be uploading a video separately for the calculator work. Once again, if you need any help with any of the calculator work, please just send me an email and I'll either make a video for you or find one on YouTube that would work as well. So, how would we graph this? Well, first, what are we given? We're given x equals, ooh, and there's that new parameter, t plus 1. And y equals t squared. So how would we graph this? Well, it's going to be sort of like a usual table we'd have, of an xy table, but we're going to add on that value for t. So let's go ahead. And we would have x and then our y values right here. Let me go ahead and extend that a little further. Okay, so let's pick some values for t. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of guessing. I'll go ahead and pick maybe negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. As usual, the best idea is to pick some values that are positives and some that are negatives, and always pick 0 as well, if you can. Now, let's go ahead and evaluate this. x is supposed to equal t plus 1. So that'll be negative 2 plus 1, which is going to equal negative 1. And then for negative 1, we'll have negative 1 plus 1, so that'll be 0. And then we get 0 plus 1, which will be 1. And then 1 plus 1, which will be 2. And lastly, 2 plus 2, which, ooh, sorry, 2 plus 1, which is going to be 3. Okay, so there we have our x values. Let me go ahead and highlight those. Our x values for the parameter given of t. Let's go ahead and find the y values. For y, it's taking the t value and squaring it. So we'll take that negative 2 and square it, and we get 4. And then do the same for all of the other values. We're just squaring the t. And we get 1, 0, another positive 1, and 4. All right, so there we have our y values. So let me go ahead, and you wouldn't have to do this on the exam. The table you would need to show for an exam, but I'm just going to go ahead and add an extra column, which you would not need to do. So what would our x, y points look like? Well, it's going to be negative 1, 4, 0, 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, and 3, 4. That I'm just using for the graphing. OK, so let's go ahead and graph these points. I'm going to zoom in real quick a little bit here. What other points we're graphing? Well, starting off, we have negative 1, 4. So negative 1 and 4 right there negative 1, 4, and then we have 0, 1. So 0, 1 right here, and then 1, 0, right on down there. Green was probably not the best color to pick, but you can still see it. And then we have 2, 1. And lastly, 3, 4. Hey, this looks like something we know. This looks like parabola. All right, so what did we know when we are drawing this? I'm trying to zoom out here and it's struggling with me. Okay, well, as we started to go from these points down, it went down and then it started to grow back up as we went from negative to positive. So that's the direction our graph. As we slowly get bigger values for t, our graph slowly heads up in that direction. So when we bring in the parameter t, and once again, we're talking about a movement of an object here when we're talking about the parameters. So our object is going to head 
in this direction. As we slowly move in those values, that is the direction that our graph is growing. So, once again, what you're going to do for parameters is you're going to use arrows to indicate the movement. Now, the last thing to do is to write this without the parameter, and I did not leave a bunch of room for this. Let me go ahead and erase that. So we want to write this without a parameter. How would we do that? Well, basically, the parameter is t, and we want to get rid of t. That's how we'd write it without a parameter. Get rid of t. So let me box this off so I have some space to get rid of my parameter. Getting rid of a parameter, we're going to substitute the two values into one another. So we're going to substitute these two equations into one another to get rid of t. So sub to get rid of t. Does it matter which one we sub into which one? Mm, not really. I'm going to go ahead and sub the x value into the t value, which means in order to do that, I'm going to get x minus 1 equals t, and then I'll sub that right on in here to the b squared. So let's go ahead and see what we have there. We get y equals x minus 1 squared, which will end up equaling, let me just go ahead and do this indication arrow over here, that y equals x squared plus, oop, minus, sorry, minus 2x plus 1. And there we have our equation without the parameter of t, and we'll notice, hopefully, this brings back some memories from, let's say, Math 103 or Math 135, but this is the equation for a parabola, which is indeed what we have right here. Okay, so once we got rid of the parameter, we're able to see the graph as we would normally, just in the xy plane. One thing to note, for your calculator, you're going to select mode, PAR for parameter, and then put in your x and y values. And once again, this will be done on another video for your graphing calculator. All right, so that was the first problem we had with our parameter of t. Now let's take a look at example two. So we're told to eliminate the parameter, sketch the graph, and then check with a graphing calculator. Once again, this portion will be on another video. Okay, so eliminate the parameter. What does that mean again? It means to get rid of t. Well, let's look at what we're given. We're given our x equation and our y equation. They have our parameter, which is t. Once again, usually time. And we need to get rid of t. How would we do that? Well, if you recall, we know that r of cosine t and r of sine t are part of an equation we call x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So x squared plus y squared is going to equal, well, my x value is the 4 cosine t plus my y value, which is the 4 sine t. That's going to end up equaling, so 16 cosine squared of t plus 16 sine squared of t. Let's go ahead and factor out that 16, and we'll get cosine squared t plus sine squared t. Ooh, that is always beautiful to see. Why? Because that equals 1. Awesome. Okay, that equals 1. So we're just left with 16. Well, let's bring down this portion right here. That means x squared plus y squared equals 16. Hopefully, this equation rings a bell. This is the equation of a circle centered at 0 with a radius of 16. Once again, this is something from math 103, actually. All right, so what do we have here? We have a circle centered at 0, centered at 0, 0 with radius r equals 4. If you need any reminders on how to figure that out with graphing of a circle, just send me an email and I'll give you some resources for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph that. We have our center at 0, 0, and then our radius of 4. So that means going out from that center will go 4 units. Easiest to just go ahead and graph out 4 to the right, 4 to the left, 4 down, 4 above, and let's see how well I do a circle. Oh, not... well, it's looking 
Yeah. Kind of okay. All right. Um, as long as it has a circular aspect to it, try not to make it look like an ellipse. If it looks too much like an ellipse, that might be a bit of a problem. Okay, let me go ahead and fix that last spot right there. My pen is lagging. Okay. All right, we tried. And there we have our circle. So now we need to figure out what direction might this be going in? Because once again, it had a parameter, so we're talking about a direction over time. So let's go ahead and do our table for x, y values and take a look at some parameters. So we have of 0, and since we're working with cosine and sine, let's pick some parameters that are radian values. So pi over 4 and pi over 2. Well, for x, when we have it at 0, that's going to be 4 times cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we'll get 4. Plugging in these values, we can go ahead and simplify, and we'll get the following. All right, so once we plug these values in, we're going to find out that this will slowly be generated in a counterclockwise direction. Going like this. And it's easier to see on your calculator, because your calculator graphs it out with respect to the building t values as they get greater and greater. And this is the direction that our parameter would be going. So maybe a way to visualize this would be, I'm not certain if you've ever watched a stream go by, if you know what an eddy is in a stream. But an eddy, if you have a stream going by, is this small section sort of outcropping on the side of your stream where the current slowly starts to circle. And oftentimes things or even people get caught in eddies, so they are dangerous. If you're ever in a stream, watch out for those. So just sort of heading in a circular motion, that might be an example of the graph we have here. Once again, it's not the example, but a possible example. So one thing to note or to take away from this, if you ever have x equal to some cosine value and y equal to some sine value, it's going to be a circle centered at 0 with the radius of r, which would be the value right in front of the cosine. Okay, So if you ever have x equal to a cosine value and y equal to a sine, it's going to be a circle centered at 0 with your radius equal to the value right in front of the sine and the cosine. Now, if we switch cosine and sine, so if we had them switched, what will happen? Well, we'll end up with a circle, same, but the direction on the circle will be in the opposite direction. We've switched the direction. Kind of neat. All right, once again, there will be a video for this on using the calculator. All right, let's take a look at the next example, example three. Eliminate the parameter, sketch the graph, and check with a graphing calculator. Once again, this part will be done in another video. So let's see, what do we have here? We have x equals cosine 2t and y equals cosine of t. All right, so it's not going to be the circle because this is a cosine, but that is a sine. So the easiest way to get rid of the parameter is to think of any of the identity equations that we know from previous, or just any of the trig equations we know in general. And one thing I do know is I know cosine of 2t is the same thing as 2 cosine squared t minus 1. That is a way of including the cosine 2t and the cosine of t. I have found an equation that uses both of those values, and that's the goal. Find an equation we already know that uses both of the values that you're trying to get rid of the t with. So let's go ahead and use that. We'll use right here. So, what do we know? Actually, sorry, let me erase the u's. Well, we know that x equals cosine 2t. So let's go ahead and write that down. x equals cosine 2t, and once again, I'm trying to get rid of the t. Well, what do I know? I know that cosine 2t is equal to 2 cosine squared t minus 1. So that means x is going to equal, so swapping cosine out, we'll get 2 cosine squared t minus 1. Now, Last little mini step here. We'll rewrite this, the cosine squared t, as cosine t squared. It's the same thing, minus 1. Now the last step we'll use to get rid of that t value is we know that y is the same thing as cosine of t. So we'll go ahead and replace the cosine of t with y, and we get x equals 2y squared minus 1. Voila, there we go. We have an equation without t. 
How did we find that? Well, we thought of one of the identity formulas, or any of the formulas, that uses the two values we are given. So this formula here used the two values here and here that we were already given. And now we have our equation in terms of just x and y without the parameter t. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out how we would graph this. Let me go ahead and erase this here. So sketching the graph, well, we're going to go ahead and use our table of t, x, and y. So a t value, and then we'll go ahead and pick our x and y values. And sorry if there's some background noise, my two cats are chasing each other around my room. All right, let's go ahead and pick some values for t. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and move the t and the x a little bit higher so we have more space. So some values for t. Well, it's always good to start with 0, and then just slowly build your t values larger and larger. This also helps us to discover which direction our graph is going in, if you move from the lower values to the larger values. So t, x, and y. If we pick t of 0, and then we'll go ahead and grow our values, getting larger and larger, until we figure out the direction our graph is going. Well, when t is 0, our x value is going to be cosine of 2 times t, so that'll be cosine of 1, which is just 1. Sorry, cosine of 0, which is just 1. And then y is going to be cosine of 0, which is also going to give me 1. And then filling out these values, we'll get 0, root 2 over 2, and then negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1, and 0, root 2 over 2. So let's go ahead and graph this. Well, we have 1, 1 is one of our values. Let me pick a different color here, actually. We have 1, 1. And then we have 0, root 2 over 2. A little smaller than 1 there. And then negative 1, 0. And then back over to here. And then lastly, we have 0. Sorry, we have 1, negative 1. And then we had 0, root 2 over 2. Sorry, these values should have been switched. Okay, so we have this little image here. This is actually a parabola opening to the right, which is what this would be when we graphed it. Now you might say, can we get larger values up and off into this direction like a normal parabola would, right? Isn't that normally what we would have? Well, the problem here is that if you recall, cosine is only going to be between negative 1 and 1. That's the largest it can get, so we can't go past there. And then one thing we're going to note is the direction of this item is just going to go back and forth between these values as t gets bigger. And if there is a restriction on t, such as that maybe t is supposed to be in between 0 and pi, then we would have a direction for our graph here. But since there was no restriction, we don't actually have a direction for our graph. All right, example four. Find the parametric equation of a line with slope 2 that passes through the point 1, 4. Verify by eliminating the parameter and writing the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. Okay, so this time it's a little different than what we were doing previously. We're not actually given parametric equations for x and y. We're actually given the information of a normal line that has a slope of 2 and it passes through the point 1, 4. And we need to create the parametric equation. So basically that means we want two equations, x and y, with t in both of those equations. Well, what do we know? Let's go ahead and start with slope. We know the slope. If you recall, the slope is supposed to be the changes in the x value and the y value. So the changes in y and the changes in x. And what is the slope we're given? We're given that it's a slope of 2. So that is going to be 2 over 1. And the slope is the change in our line. And we're talking about t is usually the change in time. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by our parameter t. Now you could also note, as we would do with slopes when we're working on the slopes of lines, 2 over 1 is the same thing as negative 2 over negative 1. And you could go ahead and work with that if you wanted to. We're just going to stick the easier version right here. All right, now what else do we know? Well, we've used our slope, but we also know this point here. We have our x value, and we also have a y value. So we know at some point that x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 4. Where did we get that from? Once again, 
We got that from right up here. Our y was 4 and our x was 1. The next thing we know is how do our equations change? Well, we get that from our slope. Once again, this is talking about the change. Let me change to a highlighter. It's talking about the change. So our y values, how do they change? Well, they change by 2t. We'll go ahead and add that in. Our y values change by 2t. And then how do our x values change? Well, they change by 1t. Let me change that, 1t. And that is how they change here, by 1t or just t. And there we have our parametric equations. So we use the slope to find the way that they change with t. And then we used their points right here and here from there. Okay, so now we have to actually verify this by eliminating the parameter. How would we do that? One of the easiest ways is if we can, we'll go ahead and substitute them into one another. Now once again, if we're using trig values, if our parameters had trig, we would usually use a trig identity, but they don't. So we'll just substitute them into each other. It's easier when you're not using trig. So let's verify that. We'll go ahead and we'll sub, let's see, we'll sub x into y. So starting with y, we'll sub the x in. Now you could do it the other direction if you wanted to, but I'll just go ahead and sub the simpler one into the more complicated one. So this value is a simpler one, so I'm going to substitute it into the more complicated one. And that's usually the method that I choose to do. So in this case, t is going to equal x minus 1. So plug in that in for t. We'll get x minus 1. And we get y equals 4 plus 2 times x minus 1. Solving, y equals 4 plus 2x minus 2 y equals 2x plus 2. So, is this the equation of a line with a slope of 2? It is. This is the equation of a line with a slope of 2. And does it satisfy that it passes through the point 1, 4? Let's check that. So, we are just going to be checking our equation. This means we're not going to be solving anything. We're just going to verify that one side equals the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just checking the sides equal to each other. And we have our x. I'll go ahead and use that as blue and y is red. So y is 4. So let's go ahead and plop that in. Is that going to be equal to the other side? Well, we're going to have 2 times the x value. So that'll be 1. And I just realized I wrote the equation down wrong. That should be a plus 2. Sorry about that. All right, so we have the plus 2 there. Just waiting on my pen to load. Awesome. Okay, plus 2, plus 2, and then we'll have 4, and we're wondering if that's going to equal the other side, so we'll have 2 plus 2, and what do you know? When I plug in the values, the two sides equal each other, so this indeed is the line with a slope of 2 that passes through the point 1, 4, so we have created the correct parametric equations. Okay, example 5. Consider the polar equation r equals... 2 sine, sorry, sine 2 theta plus cosine theta for 0 less than or equal to theta less than or equal to 2 pi. Express the equation in parametric form and then sketch the graph using a calculator. First things first, how will I write this in parametric form? I want to get an equation for x and an equation for y using what I have been given, which is r is sine 2 theta and cosine theta. Well, I do know if you recall, that x equals r cosine t and y equals r sine t. And we are given our r value. So let's go ahead and plop that in and then we'll have created an equation or a parametric equation with our parameter of t. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug those in. We have x equals and our r values right here. Sine 2 theta plus cosine of theta cosine t, and I'll go ahead and give a little space here, y equals sine 2 theta plus cosine theta sine of t. All right, so we have created our parametric equations. We have the x and y and our t value. So now we're going to graph this equation. Once again, I'll make a video graphing this with my calculator, but I'll just give you some of the information for graphing and try this out on your own and then compare it with my video. 
So for graphing, one thing first, if you recall, when we're doing parametric, we need to change the mode our calculator is in. So for mode, you're going to go ahead and click PAR, which means parametric. This also means that your variable is going to change to a capital T when you type it in. All right, so go ahead and do that. Open up your window. So you'll have your options for the Y1 and Y2. For Y1, you can pick either one, but I'll go ahead and choose the sine to theta plus cosine of theta cosine of t. Once again, the y1, y2 values are just talking about your equations. And we have these two equations. Okay, so let's go ahead and write these y value down. So what's going to happen is your variable for theta is going to end up looking like a capital T and your cosine or your sine is going to end up looking like a capital T as well. So in your calculator, all of these variables will end up looking like a capital T, but don't worry, that's just what we're using for the variables. All right, and then change your window. So for the window, you're actually going to have a few different parameters now. So you'll notice you're going to have a T min, which we'll set to zero. And then for your T max, go ahead and set that to 1000. How did I know to pick this? Well, I just did some guessing and checking until I was sure I had my entire graph. So if you wanted to figure that out, for fun, go ahead and just set your max to 10 and see what you get on your calculator. All right, and then I just did the step for all of these in terms of one. Then for my x min, go ahead and set that to negative two. x max, set that to two. And then your y min, go ahead and set that to the negative two as well. And then your y max, set that to two. Okay, when you graph that, you should get something that is starting here and it's heading in this direction. It goes around and then it pops into this quadrant, comes around, and then what does it do? Well, your graph will probably very slowly be graphing it. It pops over to here and then it's going to go around in this direction up here. And it'll pop up over this direction over here. And lastly, it'll finish out here. And that is what your graph will look like. Really weird, but kind of cool that your graph can do that. So that would be the direction that it would be heading in, the way that it graphed. Once again, I'll be putting that on a video for the calculator. And then that is it for this section. Here are the practice problems once again, which should be up by the end of the week. Other than that, please email me if you have any questions or concerns about the homework or the lecture videos.